Now then, long time no see. Been a while, hasn't it? I hope everyone's okay. As it's, as you can tell by the title, this is just, I'm just going through the stuff that I took with me on my recent Cape Wrath Trail journey. So stick around if that's what you're into. I'm gonna, it's gonna be quite a detailed look. I'm not gonna go too deep because I'm gonna do a few individual reviews on some of the good stuff and maybe do the clothes separately as well in a more detailed review. Yeah, I just thought before all the kit gets dispersed around house and tidied up and I forget what I took and whatnot, um, I just thought I'd show you, quickly go through what I took with me. The weight, I've just weighed it. Uh, I can't really tell you weight, man, because I, I don't have the food that I've eaten, not food and stuff like that, so I reckon, what did I weigh? And it's about 12k. 12kg with all the food. Without the food, um, we're, we're about 8.7 kilograms as a base weight. So, let me just quickly start. I didn't, I didn't, <laughs> I didn't do it in dad shorts. Didn't worry about that. So, where we'll start on outside then. What did I wear? I'm gonna run through this quick. I took this, I wore this a lot, man. This outdoor research cap. Very lightweight, just keep, kept the sun out of my eyes, it kept the sun off my back. And when it was raining, it was perfect just to shelter my eyes and my face from the rain. It also comes with a, um, like a little floppy bit down the side so that you can fully encl en enclose yourself to protect yourself from the sun. Maybe even give, you a little, give yourself a little bit of protection from the midges as well. That was brilliant. What was good as well with this, there was hardly any dead weight. I think I used everything. Footwear, it's a big bone of contention. I'm gonna talk about this a little bit more in depth in another video, but oh, look at the sun's blazing it through, isn't it? Look at that, man. A bit too sunny, is it, you think? Yeah. So, a couple of days before I set off, I had a change of heart and went for my lowers to these Lone Peak 5s. Um, these Ultra Lone Peak 5s. So with that, we've got these Montane Via little ankle gaiters there and they come with like these little plastic things uh, elasticated things that go underneath now I wore through four of them I wore like you can see that one's worn out I wore through four of them on the trail so they could do with being a bit stronger or just take a few more with you these are the Aclima Merino like running socks or liner socks almost so that there's not a lot of weight in them and they dried quickly. So that was that was my footwear. My duds of choice were these. I know we're, we're talking about duds on the internet. What's going on? These are, I don't know what specifics, but they're the, they're the icebreaker. Oh, someone's just cranked chainsaw up, but we're going to plod on regardless. Icebreaker. I think they're merino wool as well. They were brilliant. Trousers. Last minute change of trousers. I went for these which were the uh, Fjell Raven Vida trekking leggings. So skin tight so that ticks and whatnot can't get all up in you. And then I just used my belt from my Montane pants on there. They were so, these were so good. They've got reinforced knees, reinforced buttocks. These were brilliant. Uh, Nordic Outdoors, thanks for that, mate. They were brilliant. So yeah, Nordic Outdoors sorted me out with these, my merino wool socks and merino wool base layer. Um, and they also said that if, if anybody wants to use Nordic Outdoors, they, they've given me a 5% discount to give to you and excluding tents and axes. So any of the, no, uh, excluding tents and axes. So any of the clothing, any of the Nordic clothing that you can see or anything else on the website or on the shop, you get 5% off and just use Hayes 5 at, at checkout and you'll get 5% off all your gear. So thanks to Nordic Outdoors for that, for hooking you guys up. Now I changed these, these were changeable. A t-shirt for when it was too hot. This is just a, a crag hopper, crag hopper t-shirt. Links for everything will be below. That's a go outdoors jobby. And then this I've had for time and a half, which is just a, a rab, a rab layer. So I'll just switch between these, depending on how hot or cold it was on, in, on the day. Right, on the outside of the pack. 
I've just realised this is going to be quite a long video. Sorry. Rain stuff. <laughs> Which was needed. TBH <laughs> needed. These are my Berghaus Deluge waterproof trousers. And they work a treat. They've not let me down yet. I recommend them. This, now, when, you're gonna, when you go to Scotland, especially in the Highlands, you're gonna get wet. It's just a given. It's an absolute given, sheer given. So, I did get a, I did a lot of research and people were saying about the frog, tog frogs, uh, waterproof, all in one suit, and that the jacket was really good. So I got that and in, in, in testing it up until the time I went, it let me down. It leaked because of the low neck on it. It leaked all in the front there and got soaking wet. So I went for this, which is um, it's a it's a collaboration between Ron Hill and Mountain Equipment. It's a like a trail running waterproof jacket. That <laughs> Gore-Tex. That was amazing. That just shook water off. No bother. Really good. Absolutely brilliant. In fact. A bit on the expensive side, but amazing. I will do a separate review on that actually, and maybe compare it to the to that Frog Togs one. On outside, I always have this. That's just my Z light that, that I've cut down. That is perfect for just standing on if you're getting in and out of water or just using it as a porch. Yeah, take that on all the trips. What else is in here? Oh, a little, uh, this was my towel. It's just a sponge. <laughs> uh, so I, I use this to just dry myself if I've been for a swim. And the and I use it to dry the inside of my tent as well. When it was, you know, when I had condensation, this would dry the inside of the tent and the outside and just wring it out and then pop it back in there. Saves carrying a, a full camp towel. What else on outside there? Water bottles. That was it. <laughs> I just took two smart water bottles at 600 millilitres each and just felt, f filled them as I went. Didn't take any water to begin with because there's so much water as, you, as you're hiking through the highlands. Also, this was an added extra. I carried a full can of Northern Monk. Because why not? And also, why not? Or, this, is a, this isn't even the one I took with me. Did I, even, did I make it to end? Did I drink the one halfway? Well, no one knows just yet. Unless you follow me on Instagram. Forgot to say, the bag, the bag I took was my trusty Osprey Exos 48. And that has seen some action. I've had this for years. Um, yeah, <laughs> you can see there, it's a bit, it's got a bit of wear and tear. And a bit of wear and tear on front, but it's, I love, it's so comfortable, it's got this, I mean, this airflow system at the back, even when you're hot, your back's up against there and the air can still flow through there, so. I'm not in any rush to get a super lightweight bag when this is just doing everything for me. I just love, I love how comfy it is. It just fits really nice. And, and yeah, 48 litre, that's all I, all I needed. Should we have a look? First thing we get to, the tent. The Lanshan 2 Pro. It's a thumbs up. It was amazing. And I'm used to setting up the Lanshan 1 from, from doing a lot of long distance hiking in that. So this was very similar to setting that up. So I could set it up really quickly. Right, this brings me on to this. Just a quick side track. My hiking poles. Now, uh, I've marked it in blue at the optimum height for the, for the Lanshan. And I also hiked at it I used them for hiking at the same height, so when I got to camp, I could just straight in ground. Didn't need to mess about with them. I knew where they were. And then if it was windy and rainy, I would drop them a little bit to seal the edges. Uh, if I wanted more airflow, I'd raise them a little bit. But that is how I had it with the blue ones. I think it works about 100 and 135 centimetres in total. That. But just marked it with uh, marked it with a sharpie so that I could find it quickly. But that was, I mean, you'll there's more to come on the actual trip videos. But 
what a, what a tent. Didn't let me down, didn't leak. Had a bit of condensation on a couple of nights, but that's you're gonna get that anyway. It's really light, easy to pack, easy to set up and put down. The only problem is, is when I, I camped at the side of like forestry tracks a couple of times, so it was hard to get the pegs into the ground and I had to just tie it off onto rocks because it's not freestanding, so that's the only time you'll have to, you'll have to worry. Um, and then, this was, I ummed and hard about taking these, but these are four Delta pegs, which are like hardcore pegs. These aren't going anywhere. Um, and halfway through the trip, I was like, these are annoying me. They were in my way, I'd not used them. Um, and then there was a couple of nights where I got pretty bad. There was pretty bad wind, and I was thankful of these. So I'm glad I took them, and I would take them again because Scotland is no joke. Just to uh, just to help you from when it gets a bit wild. This was my food bag. Oh man, I've got one meal left. In my food bag, and I took. Uh, how many did I take? Fifteen. I think I took fifteen. Fifteen of these meals, because my plan was to have one a day, and then. I took coffees and energy bars, and that lasted me. As, and then every time you get to a, like, a, if you come across a cafe or a shop or anything, just stock up, get something to eat along the way. A lot of people will refill or send them, they'll send care packages to themselves to pick up along the way. And I didn't do that, I just carried everything with me. I just felt easier doing that. And you also get the added bonus of your bag just getting progressively lighter as you go, which is quite a dream. Good for legs and good for morale. Cook kit, I mean, I've done, uh, you've seen this a few times, haven't you? I took the um, MSR Pocket Rocket 2, that was my stove. A gas holder for stability. And I went for a little bit bigger than the five, I went for the, I went for me seven, what is it, 750? 700, or is it 750, I'm not sure. Tux, titanium. And that just has a little bit lighter in there. And a little drying towel. I took um, one of these 200, no, I took two actually, two 240 grams. One in there and a spare one. But halfway through, I realized I wasn't gonna use or need them both, so I ditched the one I'd been using and just carried a full one with me. And that was more than enough. So I would only take one of them. If I did it again, I'd just take one of them because I was only having like one meal a day and maybe the odd brew here and there. My spare clothes. Right, these are good for morale, these like. These are darn tough. My darn tough socks. I kept these dry just until the last day, then I wore them as a little treat. But these, I alternated these and these were just camp socks. These were just to be worn. Um, in my sleeping bag and around camp, two of them. And then a spare pair of the uh, Acclima liner socks that I rotated with the ones that I wore during the day. So I'd alternate these and then these were just for, for camp. These other undies, mate, Patagonia duds. I forget the name, links below for everything, but they sort of bobbled up on the first day, I wore these on the first day and I got a, I got a pretty bad chafe on them so I bottled it on these and just went on to the, uh, the icebreakers which worked, they were brilliant. So I just wore these for swimming in the end. So I wouldn't recommend them. These were just for at camp. These were the uh, Acclima light wool. They were so lightweight but so warm as well. And such a joy, <laughs> such a joy to put on after hiking. And then this was a bit of a thicker thing, but this is the Acclima hooded top. Lots of different options with it to put over your head. You can cover your mouth and it's got a little mouthpiece in there with like a mesh. So you can still breathe out of it. And I was thankful of that on a couple of occasions. A knee brace, because my right knee gives me jip, but I tried it when my right knee was giving me jip and it's just, it rubs too much on the back. So I didn't use that and I wouldn't have took that if I had in hindsight, I wouldn't have took that. <laughs> What's this? Oh, just a, just like a buff. Use that a few times to put it over your head when it's a little bit colder on the night. And then that's my thing for me. <laughs>
this is the thing for this, like, that's one of them jobs, you know the scar, you know the scar. But I didn't use that either, so sack that. If it was a, if it was peak summer, maybe I would have worn that. Uh, my camping mat was my Thermo Rest X Therm Large. I thought about getting something lighter, but then what's the point in in, uh, in just spending loads more money on things that are just a little bit lighter? When I've got this is this is this isn't going to let me down, and I've had it for years, and I will just use this on the night because I couldn't be jenked to blow it up. So just this full full of air and like that, and then it just blows out. And so I'll just sit and do that. Summit to do, yeah? Who needs Netflix? Who needs Netflix when you can blow up a camping bed? Pillow of choice. Trekology. It's got a strap so you can strap it around your airbed so it doesn't slide off. And that was brilliant. And then, what's in here, look? Last thing. So in here is my sleeping bag. Also, these were brilliant. These are down trousers. Stop saying pants. I say pants, mate. I've always said work pants and that. So I'll say trousers. Trousers. These were down trousers. Really comfortable, really warm, and, and just a joy to get on after a day's hiking. Nature hike ones. They're a lot lighter than my uh, uh, military softies as well. They were brilliant. Uh, and this that I only wore around camp. I wore it out when I was hiking maybe once, up when I was up on the tops and it got cold. This is my Patagonia. And I can't remember the name of it, but it's not a down jacket, it's a, it's synthetic. Because I didn't want to take a down jacket somewhere that was going to be potentially soaking wet for 14 days straight. So I'd just wear that, like, and my down trousers and my merino wool base layer around camp, and that was just warm enough. I'd wear that, in, I'd wear it to sleep in. Because I only took this with my Alp kit 400, which is um, free season. I've had it for ages, mate. It's hemorrhaged quite a lot of feathers. There's not, you know, it definitely doesn't go down to as cold as it says it does anymore. But that, coupled with these, and I was like, I was, I was warm. I was never cold. Never cold. I was a bit hot at times, actually. Right, what am I doing putting that away? Just chuck it over there. What's in here? Right, into the brain of the situation. This is, this was brilliant. This was my new, this was my water filter. I saw your mini squeeze. And this, knock. don't know how you pronounce it, knock. Just water carrier. Just so glad I upgraded to this because that other plastic one takes ages to fill up just by the by the um, by the what do you call that by the mouth of it. Um, so this one you can just slide that off there and just like a dry bag you roll it that enables you to just fill it really quickly and then back on and then a way to just filter it that was a great a great addition we're going for it aren't we long titanium spoon by tox i've always just gone with little ones uh, for i'm not gonna get i've always just gone for like little spoons and just cut the bag and it out of that but i thought i can't be bothered with that if we're going to be doing it for as long as we're going to do it and so i splashed out and got one of these and i'm glad i did Spoon <laughs> and then Keck shovel that came in handy. Obvs Keck shovel, um, oh, the bog roll and the bog roll and wipes are no longer in there, they got used. But yeah, that's just my I've seen a lot. I was floating with the idea of getting one of them, to, I think they're made of aluminium, I'm not sure. The metal ones, but I've heard people say that you can't get a good grip on them and the ground up there is you know some of it's quite hard to dig and even this with handle you've got to really get into the ground to to create a scat hole so at least it does have a handle and that's why i prefer this over the other other lightweight options 
That sounded quite professional, didn't it, almost? Right, let's bring it back down. Professional is, here's my camp shoes. Top tip. What other? Sorry if you can hear that uh, chainsaw in the background. That's just people making a living. Can't begrudge that. People grafting. These are just Hovis, like small bread bags. And so, instead of taking flip flops or crocs or uh, down booties or whatever, I took these and then so I would get to camp, wet socks off, wet shoes off, let your feet air out, and then on with the pair of dry, me dry socks. Oh, it's a good feeling just thinking about it now. It's good. And then if I needed to go, if I needed to go out anywhere or leave the tent, put the bag over the sock and then just into the shoe. Have the shoe really loose, and it's just like a different bit of footwear. It feels really comfy. Now, these aren't getting wet. Your feet aren't getting wet, and these are and are super lightweight. So that's a good little hiker's tip. The rain cover. I got a new rain cover. I got the actual rain cover for that Osprey, which is brilliant because it's got a it's got a clip that goes around the back of it and clips that goes over your your hip belt, so it's not going to go anywhere. And that worked a treat. Glad I got that. What else is in here? One thing. And my this is the Patagonia bum bag. Um, just for fun and whatever in there. It's super lightweight and I, and I used that for the first few days and then I sacked it. I put it away because I thought I, I would I thought I would have used it more but I didn't and so in hindsight I maybe wouldn't have took that right. And the, one of the reasons why I didn't use it as much was because I used this on chest pouch which I used all the time. Let's have a quick look in here. What have we got? We've got these OR sun gloves, which came in really handy because it's quite easy to get um, blisters when you're hiking, using your hiking poles all day. It's sunny that, isn't it? So they came in handy just for holding the hiking poles. It gives your hands a bit of protection and you're not gonna sweat because they're, they're really light. And they afford you a little bit of protection from midges if they're out and about. This is just my waterproof carrier for my phone because I was using my phone as my GPS so that when it rained it would go in there around my neck and I can still use it. But, but yeah, so like one of the most important things is being ready for when it rains. So everything I had and I had just a system for when it rained, everything would be very quickly waterproofed. So going into here, into, because this itself isn't waterproof, so I kept a second one of these sponges just in the bottom, which would soak up the water when it rained, and then I could just wring that out. So that would take all the water away from, from my stuff that was in here, which was also in a sandwich bag. And in another sandwich bag, these are mushroom tablets, which I just took as a supplement Ibuprofen, they were still in there because it started to, my feet were hurting. So I just had them munching on them. My compass for, for my map reading, taking bearings and just keeping it real. And then a, a super light Sea to Summit head net, midge head net. Very small, very lightweight. My torch, my new torch. This is the, uh, Petzl Bindi, really lightweight. I think I only used it once or twice because you're so tired by the end of the day, you're not staying up till it gets dark most of the time. And that's rechargeable, it's got a red light, flashing light, it's quite powerful and you can turn it around like that and lock it in place so that you're not gonna press any of the buttons, which is a good feature. Glad I got that for future wild camps and maybe in autumn and winter, but for, for long distance hiking, do you even need it? Just use the phone on your, I mean the light on your phone. So I didn't really use that a lot at all, but I'm glad I had it with me. And that went in there. My watch, which I had on, which is just my Iron Man watch, it's just to stop me looking at my phone and whatever. And then I had a dry bag in there as well, which held everything. 
in the dry bag. Also I had my camera in there, camera phone and everything so it would just fold it up with a sponge underneath <laughs> and all in there as well so it's like belt and breeches because some days it was just eshing it down man. Power bank, which is just the anchor power bank to keep my phone, my, keeping my phone charged was the my priority because that was uh, used that as a GPS and obviously to keep in contact with people as and when you get a signal. Speaking of which, this is the Garmin InReach Mini. Um, you put an app on your phone and then you can, I think you get about 10 messages a month. It links up to its own satellite, it's pricey and then once you've bought it then you have to buy a subscription to it as well. But when you don't have signal and you're out and about it's good just to be able to text your loved ones and just say like this is my location send them your locale and just say this is where I am I'm okay I used it for that a couple of times I also used it to get a weather report when I'd, I'd pitched my tent during the day when it was the weather had turned on me and I was starting to worry and I was trying to plan my way over this ridge so I got a quick weather report on this and then made my decisions based on that so yeah it's a necessary thing really, I think, because if you fall over in the middle of nowhere and you do your legging, you've got no signal, it's not a very popular trail in certain parts, you know, because you've gone off on your own, you've chosen your own path. And it's nice to know that if you just press the SOS on here, that it, it, the emergency services will, will pick it up and come directly to you. And I'm going to use that, I'm going to put that on my fishing float as well when I go spear fishing. so it's a worthwhile investment, I think. Yeah, I didn't take any smidge or anything. I just took my head net and sprayed my clothes before I went with anti-tick stuff, tick bug stuff. In here, I've got a, I've got, I just had a little travel toothpaste, bamboo toothbrush, and a little thing of um, hand sanitizer. I wouldn't have took that one. I only used it once, just because I thought, why not, but it's not. I wasn't around many people, so I wouldn't have took that, I don't think. A spare lighter in there. <laughs> this is where we get a little bit hippie on this one, look. These are CBD patches, like nicotine patches, but for CBD to help with your joints and help you sleep and whatnot. I've got my first aid kit, which is just in a sandwich bag, which has compedes in there, which I used a lot of, um, plasters. It's got, um, what have we got? Anodin for joint pain. I never use them. Uh, ibuprofen, which I used. Um, anti diarrhea tablets, just in case. Didn't use them, but you don't want to be getting the shits while you're out and about. Some tweezers for all sorts of reasons. And my tick key. You see the tick key? Put, you get your tick in there and then just twist it, pull it off. That got used quite a bit, <laughs> quite a few ticks on me. And uh, my hair's mirror, which I used just to get into them, I had to look places just for tick extraction and tick checking. And I took a, also had um, a little bottle of CBD oil that I ploughed through on my journey, just again to help with joint pain and and help sleep and stuff. Um, in the bag as well, there was a, I've got like a heavy duty claggy bag, which I used as a liner. But everything went in that bag, and then, so that was waterproof. Everything was in its own, everything of importance was in its own dry bag inside there. And then, and then I had the rain cover over the top, so nothing got wet except me a little bit, because you're walking through rivers and all that gear, aren't you? I might do a separate video on the clothes that I took and a more in-depth video on things like the Garmin InReach Mini shoes, some of the big players. I think that's everything. <clears throat> and I hope I've not missed anything out. Um, a special shout out to Nordic Outdoors for hooking me up with these, these socks and the Merino base layer. They were brilliant, so thank you. They're, they've, they've really come through for me there and they've offered a 5% discount all across the, the store for anything except for axes and tents just use the code HAYS5 at checkout and you'll get 5% off all your gear so 
thanks Nordic Outdoors for that. They're a, they're a sound company run by sound people. Um, I hope I've not missed anything out. If I have, I'm sorry. If you want to be notified when I upload the Trek video, just click the subscribe button down below and the bell notification, and then you'll get a pop-up letting you know when I've next uploaded. Right, hopefully I've not forgot out. Right, thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you soon. Take care. Oh, legs are still a bit tender, like. See you later. Oh, no. Don't show them. Don't show them. Josie's technicolor blanket. You love it. See you later.